Hey, uh, sorry for my disheveled look and doing the whole selfie cam thing here, but um, I figured this was the only way without a partner to show a few things that I wanted to show. Um, this is about flies. Now, uh, anybody who's followed my, uh, at least my Facebook presence knows that I've had a shoulder issue for a while. My left shoulder is giving me all kinds of issues um, for a while. And so I had to be careful with the kinds of stresses I put on it. Still wanting to, you know, develop my chest and, um, you know, continue working out, but not put unnecessary stress on it. Uh, so specifically, I wanted to talk about flies. Now, uh, I'll try to do a subsequent video where I can demonstrate this properly, perhaps with a second person to show a few things and some illustrations. Um, but for now, you know, just bear with me here. People say a fly's a fly, and uh, that's not the case. It's just not true. Where the force is at the beginning and throughout the rep, at the end of the rep, um, will change as far as where the maximal resistance point is, depending on your force angles, you know, what kind of forces or what kind of pull you're putting on yourself. What I mean is, if I'm doing this with a uh, with a dumbbell, doing a dumbbell fly, then as I come back, hopefully I can show this here, as I come back, you picture, say this is the bottom of the rep, right, or near the bottom of the rep, uh, my upper arm, if I were lying on my back right now, would be pretty much flat on the, on the ground if I'm on the floor, or it would be about parallel to the bench, starting to dip below. So there's a lot of stress on the front of my shoulder here. The weight would continue wanting to pull my arm back, right? And uh, that may or may not be an issue in terms of creating stresses on the front of the shoulder capsule. Um, there might be some forces going on here that my shoulder can't tolerate. It's not a bad thing, it's just a thing to be aware of. So, you know, you should know that that's where the resistance is the greatest. Another thing being that um, as a muscle becomes more lengthened, it kind of gets towards the end of a length curve, either uh, too long or too short. Well, uh, overly long or overly short, when it's really far from the mid-range of its lengths, tends to get weaker. So that may be something to think about if I'm getting way far back here into a chest uh, exercise or a fly, is that as the muscle is starting maybe to drop off in strength and the deltoid might be picking up some things, that's another discussion, um, the resistance is the highest here, especially if I haven't brought my hand in, if I keep my arm really far out, that's a long lever, right? So that may be a thing that you know, I don't want to do. Plus, at the top of the rep, when I'm in front here, um, you know, if I'm doing a dumbbell and gravity's pushing down this way, well now, I'm pretty much stacked over the joint. I have virtually no resistance here at my shoulder in terms of uh, what's going on in the pec. And so the chest is not getting much work out here. Now I can reverse this or alter it you know, in degrees if I use a machine that allows me to alter the force angles. How do I do that? Well, we've got a lovely little guy here. I'm in front of a free motion machine. A lot of people like to you know, scoff at these. They like to make fun of them. And I think um, lots of times maybe that just shows a lack of understanding. Even if you choose not to use a machine, it's good to know how to use it in case you do need it. And it's good to try it to see what you can do with it that you can't do maybe with free weights. And here's something you can't do with free weights um, in a traditional kind of uh, you know chest fly configuration here. I can alter this. I'm going to show you here. You know, you can change how far get the angle right. You can change how far out this thing is rotated. So this arm here can rotate out to where it can pull. That cable here can be pulling straight out instead of pulling back. If I rotate this guy all the way out here, right? If I rotate this as far out as it goes, and then I position my shoulder to be even with this right here. So now I can get to the end of a, a fly range or a fly rep. And what's happening is, if you see, the cable's just kind of pulling my arm out this way. This is a very comfortable position. So now it's basically pulling through the joint or very close to it. Which means that as I get weaker towards the end here and as my shoulder potentially gets into a more compromised position, I don't have to worry as much about some of these stresses in my shoulder possibly causing problems. And now that's point one. So if you're trying to preserve your shoulder, if you happen to have shoulder issues or have a concern about that, this gives you an opportunity to do that. Additionally, you can change the angle, right? I can raise this thing up or down. Uh, I, don't, I need an extra hand, you know, because I have to hit a pedal here and do a bunch of stuff. But you can see that I could alter this by raising this arm up so I can pull, you know, down at more of an angle or pull up at more of an angle if I so choose. But the major thing 
Point one was preserving the shoulder by having, at the end of the rep, the force pull out instead of back. So that changes the way my shoulder experiences the stresses there. Secondly, remember what I said about the dumbbell. At the top of the rep, you're feeling hardly anything. Well, the opposite is true if I set it up this way on a cable. Again, if I have this guy pulling out this way instead of pulling back, well now, imagine if I come forward here. That, that cable would be pulling perpendicular. In fact, let me grab it here. I come out here, that cable is perpendicular, more or less, to my arm, which means there's a lot of torque going on right here. I'm generating a reasonable bit of force, and this isn't super heavy weight, but just to hold this here requires my pec to do a lot of work. So I can get resistance here, a maximal resistance point somewhere near the top of the rev, or what would be considered the top of the rev, if I were doing a dumbbell fly. And I could not do that with dumbbells. At least there's not any realistic way I can see to do that with two dumbbells at once. You could try to do something lying on your side. I can't imagine how that would be particularly... Um, probably wouldn't be comfortable. It would be very awkward and you would have to do one side at a time. So. Uh, I just wanted to show that. The video ran a little longer than I wanted to. And again, sorry for the, for the selfie cam thing. That's the only way I can really demonstrate this and keep my body in the frame. So uh, hopefully you get something out of this. Uh, if there's any desire, I'll do another video like this. And, um, you know, hopefully with a second person, a model, so I can explain things a little bit more cleanly. But I wanted to put this idea in your head. So thanks for watching.